All right guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to send commands from your computer to your client's computer and that client can be a victim or a friend. So first thing we are going to do is actually create a function and let's call it send underscore commands. And inside this function, we are going to accept the connection object. We are calling the send command function from over here and we are defining the send command function over here. So let's put a colon and before you get into the content of this function, let's actually first change this to send commands. And the second thing we are going to do is actually, let me just write a comment, say send commands to client, victim or a friend if you want to help them out. Now inside this, we are going to create a while loop that is infinite. Why an infinite loop? Uh, because for example, let's say we are going to send a command to our friend's computer. After that, it's going to go to this next line, which is going to close the connection. But what if we want to send more than one command to our friend or our victim? So for that, we have to implement a concept of persistence somehow. So that persistence is achieved by using an infinite while loop. The easiest way to create an infinite while loop is just using while, true, and that's it. So just to make it clear again, using this statement makes it an infinite loop statement. And why are we using this infinite loop statement is because if we send just a send command, for example, if we type in dir, it's going to show us the output of the directories, but after that, it's going to close the connection. Instead, what we want is that we should be able to send more than one commands. So for example, if you have already typed in DIR, we can just type in CLS or something, and we are able to send this command to our friend's computer again. So that is where this while true comes in. The next thing we are going to do is just make a variable called CMD, and then we are going to take input from the console. Now this line is to just take input from us. So for example, if we want to send a command like dir, so this dir will be saved in CMD and then we can use the CMD variable and send the commands to the connection. Now, because of this while true, this is an infinite loop and the connection isn't closed at any point. What if we want to close the connection? So what we are going to do is just whenever we type in quit into our input is going to close the connection. So let's implement that functionality. So if CMD equals to quit, what we want it to do is close the connection firstly, and then close the socket s dot close. And the next thing we want it to is actually close the command prompt. So for example, if this command prompt is open, what we want it to do is exit the command prompt. So for that, we'll use this sys sub module that we imported uh, during the first video. So we'll just write in sys dot exit and that is going to close our command prompt also. Now that we have created the quit functionality, we are going to create the functionality that sends the actual commands to another computer. But before we get into that, you need to understand one more thing. And that is when you send data from one computer to another computer, it is not sent in the format of a string, but in the format of bytes. So if we want to send any kind of command, for example, DIR or CLS to another computer, we first have to encode it into a byte format. So the next thing we are going to do is just write if str.encode because we are going to encode our command prompt, that is the command prompt data, that is the CMD input into bytes. And that is where this encode comes in. So we are just going to type in CMD inside it. And then we want the length of this command. So we are just going to type in LEN in front of it. And let's close the brackets around it. So this gives us the length of the encoded string that we are going to send to another computer. And if this size is greater than zero, then we know that the user has actually typed something in. So for example, if we type something like if we just press enter and we have not typed anything, then the length will be zero and it won't be greater than zero. So nothing will be executed because it doesn't make any sense to execute a command and ex just send something over the network if you're not actually typing anything. So we just have a check for it in the if condition. But if you're typing something like dir, then the length will be greater than zero and it's going to implement the functionality under this if statement. Now to send the command from our computer to another computer, we are going to use a function called con.send. 
con just stands for connection and send is actually the function. Now inside this con.send, we actually can't just send a string. So we'll have to do as we did above. We are actually going to encode it into a byte format. So let's just copy this from over here and we can just paste this over here. Now this function actually sends our data to another computer. Now, when we send some data to another computer, we're also going to receive some information back. So for example, if we type in echo hey and press enter, echo hey is the command that we sent using the con.send function and hey is the output that we are going to receive back to the server from the client. So this hey or the output, for example, we are going to type in dir. So this kind of output should be stored in some kind of variable. So this is what we are going to do. So let me just create a variable which is going to store all this output. I'm just going to call it client response. After that, I'm just going to type in str brackets and inside this connection dot receive. And inside this, we are going to put the buffer of 1024 comma and then the encoding format of UTF-8. Now what are these two parameters and why are we converting it to a string? So whenever data is being received, we have to convert it from a byte format to a string format. And this is, that is where this connection dot receive comes in and then we convert it into a string format. So what is this 1024 inside it? Whenever we are sending bytes or when we are receiving bytes, it is sent in some kind of chunks. It can't be sent all at the same time if it's very huge. So the chunk is usually 1024 bytes or bits depending on what kind of network there is. So that is why we choose the 1024 number and then connection dot receive is used to receive some kind of information back from our client. So this is the function of connection dot receive 1024 and then this UTF-8 stands for the encoding type. It basically says that convert this kind of stuff into a format that can be converted into a string and then using this string function we actually convert it into a string and store it in the variable of client underscore response. So now that we have received our client response let's actually print out on the screen. We are just going to write print client response press enter and after that we are going to put a comma and end equal to double quote. Now what is this end equal to double quote? So if you go to our command prompt if we type in some kind of command like for example echo hey what it does is it prints it out and then it goes to this next line and this is the exact kind of functionality that we want. So what this end equals to double code does is that after printing it out, it makes it go to the next line. If you don't put this end equal to double code and empty double code, it basically it will stay on the same line and when we enter a new command, it's not going to work. Now the last thing that I want to do is basically create a function that calls the above functions. So we are going to create a main function and inside this main function, we are first going to create a socket. So we are just going to write create socket. We are just actually calling the functions that we have created above. So whenever the server.py file is done, it's going to execute this main function and it's going to execute also the above functions. So first we'll create a socket after which we'll bind the socket to the host and port. And lastly, we are going to accept the socket. So now that we have called all the three functions, uh, we are going to just call the main function and we are not calling the last function of send commands because it is being automatically called in our socket accept function over here. Now that we have created the whole server.py file, let me just right click over here and run our server.py file and it says binding the port double line double line. That means that our server.py file is working. Actually, this doesn't look good. So I'm just going to go above where we wrote binding the port and give a little bit of space over here. So yeah, this should look good. And yeah, but our server is working and we haven't created a client.py file. So this file is a little bit useless. So that is what we are going to be doing in the next video. We are going to be creating the client.py file, which is going to go in on a friend's computer or a victim's computer if you are some kind of crazy hacker. So I'll see you in the next video.